<laughs> you really think that splashing magic water on Stewie will keep him out of hell? What's that kind of talk or you'll get your heathen head smacked? Well, oh, that's very Christian. Believe what I say or I'll hurt you. Yeah, maybe ah, you don't want someone in the highest office that believes in magic underwear. <laughs> Are, so, you familiar so, with the, are you familiar with the Mormon religion? Yeah, oh yeah. So do you believe that Mormon, Mormonism is a cult? I don't care if it's a cult. I think they all are. I'm an atheist. I don't partake to any religion. I, I believe in the teachings of George Carlin now. When it comes to bullshit, big time, major league bullshit, you have to stand in awe of the all-time champion of false promises and exaggerated claims Religion. Think about it. Religion has actually convinced people that there's an invisible man living in the sky who watches everything you do every minute of every day. And the invisible man has a special list of ten things he does not want you to do. And if you do any of these ten things, he has a special place full of fire and smoke and burning and torture and anguish where he will send you to live and suffer and burn and choke and scream and cry forever and ever till the end of time. But he loves you. He loves you. He loves you and he needs money. He always needs money. He's all powerful, all perfect, all knowing, and all wise. Somehow, just can't handle money. Religion takes in billions of dollars. They pay no taxes, and they always need a little more. Now, you talk about a good bullshit story. Holy shit. These are supposed to be the ten most important rules for mankind to follow, and God spent the first four flattering himself and being jealous. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, thou shalt not worship false idols, thou shalt not take my name in vain, and thou shalt keep the Sabbath day for me and me alone. Good grief. He's like a paranoid menopausal housewife with an adulterous husband. <gasps> Don't you go looking at other gods. I know what you're like, giving Shiva the glad eye. Hi. Namaste. Uh, this is Vanamali. Um, I believe um, that we Hindus are the chosen people. Uh, karma and rebirth means that we are the chosen people. He was only a king, and the National Covenant was a contract between Scotland and God. I like you and have no reason not to. I like you and have no reason not to. Hey, did you hear about that magic baby that was born in Bethlehem? I'd like to start this week with a request, and this one goes out to the followers of the three Abrahamic religions, to the Muslims, Christians, and Jews. It's just a little thing, really, but do you think that when you've finished smashing up the world and blowing each other to bits and demanding special privileges while you do it, do you think maybe the rest of us could sort of have our planet back? <laughs> um... I wouldn't ask, but the thing is, I'm starting to think there must be something written in the special books each of you so enjoy referring to that tells you it's all right to behave like precious, petulant, pugnacious pricks. <laughs> Forgive the alliteration, but your persistent power-mad punch-ups are pissing me off. <laughs> it's mainly the extremists, obviously, but not exclusively. It's a lot of mainstreamers as well. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about, okay? Muslims. Listen up, my bearded and veily friends. Calm down, okay? Stop blowing stuff up. Not everything that's said about you is an attack on the Prophet Muhammad and Allah that needs to end in the infidel being destroyed. Have a cup of tea, put on a Cat Stevens record, sit down and chill out. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what's wrong with a strongly worded letter to the Times? <laughs> Christians, you and your churches don't get to be millionaires while other people have nothing at all. They're your bloody rules. Either stick to them or abandon the faith. And stop persecuting and killing people you judge to be immoral. Oh, and stop pretending you're celibate as a cover-up for being a gay or a nonce. <laughs> Right, that's two ticked off. Jews! 
I know you're God's chosen people and the rest of us are just whatever, but when Israel behaves like a violent, psychopathic bully and someone mentions it, that doesn't make them anti-Semitic. And for the record, your troubled history is not a license to act with impunity wow. now. Nothing good is going to come out of it unless they keep fighting all the way with this till they wipe them all out. Wipe them all out. Yeah, they got to go strong with this. There's only one way to deal with a cancer. You burn it out or you remove it. And when people don't want to talk and just want to destroy you and not allow you to live, there's only one thing you can do. They are forcing us to kill their children to defend our children. A YouTube when film attacking the Prophet Muhammad triggered protests against U.S. missions in Cairo and Benghazi. In Libya, a U.S. official was killed and another was injured after after an armed mob set fire to the U.S. consulate after storming it. Now, three injured members of Libya's armed forces were reportedly taken away in ambulance, and the majority of uh, the U.S. building was reportedly destroyed. Now, earlier on Tuesday, hundreds of Egyptians marched to the U.S embassy in Cairo to protest this film. Many demonstrators were seen scaling the walls to take down the American flag and replace it with a black flag bearing the uh, inscription that means to protest. This is the first time ever that uh, the U.S. Uh, embassy in Egypt has been attacked or breached. Now, this the film that purportedly triggered uh, this uprising against U.S. diplomatic missions was uh, reportedly produced by an anti-Muslim group based in the United States. It depicts the Prophet Muhammad as a fraud and shows him having sex and calling for massacres. Reporting from New York, Marina Portnaya. <laughs> Why aren't you helping? We don't want my help. Their God is different than ours. Why did you die? Sooner or later, everyone does. Like mommy. Like mommy. Where do they go? Everyone has their own word. Heaven. Paradise. Whatever it's called, it's so less beautiful. How do you know it's beautiful? Because that's what I choose to believe. What do you believe? ABC News called me this week and said, uh, we heard that you um, believe that men should be in charge of their wives. I said, no, sir. No, sir, I didn't say that. I said, God said that. He said, husbands are the head of the wife. I said, if you got a problem with what I said, I'm quoting the Bible, maybe I'll take it up with God. He says, do you, do you think that's appropriate? I said, son, I said, anything God says is appropriate, and you better get that straight right now. I never apologize for standing where God stands. I never worry standing where God stands. Somebody says, you know what they're going to say about you? Who cares? Stand in line, pick a number, slob. Get your little squirt gun out and squirt away. Bigger things to worry about. Heaven, hell, life, death. The Bible, what people say about you, not at all. If they're quoting me while I'm quoting the Bible, hallelujah, God's word is getting out. Jesus was then recreated by the Father. Before going to heaven, he materialized in different bodies on different occasions to convince his disciples and others that he had really been resurrected. Jesus returned to his Father in heaven, where once again, he became Michael the Archangel. He will never again be seen on the earth in visible form, but instead rules invisibly from the heavens. When he executes judgment over the world at Armageddon, he will destroy all but the faithful Jehovah's Witnesses.
Jesus, alias Michael, who will always remain invisible to those on earth and can be seen only by the 144,000 select Jehovah's Witnesses who rule with him from heaven. The Mormons teach that everyone must stand at the final judgment before Joseph Smith, the Mormon Jesus, and Elohim. Those Mormons who were sealed in the eternal marriage ceremony expect to become polygamous gods in the celestial kingdom, rule over other planets, and spawn new families throughout eternity. The Mormons thank God for Joseph Smith, who claimed that he had done more for us than any other man, including Jesus Christ. The Mormons believe that he died as a martyr, shed his blood for us, so that we too may become gods. Likewise, dominant world views, such as theistic religion, operate with the same social irrelevancy. Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, and all of the others exist as barriers to personal and social growth. For each group perpetuates a closed world view. And this finite understanding that they acknowledge is simply not possible in an emergent universe. Yet, religion has succeeded in shutting down the awareness of this emergence by instilling the psychological distortion of faith upon its followers, where logic and new information is rejected in favor of traditionalized, outdated beliefs. The concept of God is really a method of accounting for the nature of things. In the early days, people didn't know enough about how things formed, how nature worked, so they invented their own little stories. And they made God in their own image. A guy that gets angry. When people don't behave right, he creates floods and earthquakes. And they say it's an act of God. A cursory glance at the suppressed history of religion reveals that even the foundational myths themselves are emergent culminations, developed through influence over time. For example, a cardinal doctrine of the Christian faith is the death and resurrection of Christ. This notion is so important that the Bible itself states, And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yet, it is very difficult to take this account literally, for not only is there no primary source denoting this supernatural event in secular history, awareness of the enormous number of pre-Christian saviors who also died and were resurrected immediately puts the story in mythological territory by association. Early church figures such as Tertullian went to great lengths to break these associations, even claiming that the devil caused the similarities to occur. Stating in the second century, the devil, whose business is to pervert the truth, mimics the exact circumstance of the divine sacraments. He baptizes his believers and promises forgiveness of sins. He celebrates the oblation of bread and brings in the symbol of the resurrection. Let us therefore acknowledge the craftiness of the devil who copied certain things of those that be divine. What is truly sad, however, is that when we cease the idea that the stories from Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and all the others are literal history, and accept them for what they really are, which are purely allegorical expressions derived from many faiths, we see that all religions share a common thread. And it is this unifying imperative that needs to be recognized and appreciated. Religious belief has caused more fragmentation and conflict than any other ideology. Christianity alone has 34,000 different subgroups. The Bible is subject to interpretation. When you read it, you say, I think Jesus meant this. I think Job meant that. Oh no, he meant this. So you have the Lutheran, the Seventh-day Adventist, the Catholic, and a church divided is no church at all. This is Cohort Brian, same year, same time. But in this universe, Christianity never existed. 
which means the dark ages of scientific repression never occurred, and thus humanity is a thousand years more advanced.